We've got another 10 minutes till one o'clock, so I'm going to propose that we go to one o'clock and move on to the report of the Housing Committee, the 10th of June. Um, the first Part A item is the Facilities Rebuild Social Housing Programme. I'm assuming that Councillor Livingstone will move and that <coughs> Councillor Cotter will second um, that uh, motion. Is there any discussion? Please, uh, if I may, Ian Livingston. I may uh, quickly provide a, an update. Very attractive your... photo in there. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry? Nothing. Oh, yes, a nice photograph. Very nice. <laughs> and that, that was good. A uh, couple of recommendations in relation to the photograph of the Mayor at the opening there. You'll see that our total number of units in our stock has increased. We used to have 2,649. We have 2675, the 12 additional Morris Carter. And if I have my calculations right, the balance uh, is the owner-occupier units coming back. So that, that's what those are. Construction has begun this week, as, we'll, as we've seen in the Chief Executive's report over the new units in Knightsbridge Lane and Aranui. There's also an exciting proposal referred to in the public excluded part of the meeting, which you will have seen as well. We've repaired over 300 units. My main concern, as you'll see from the waiting list, surrounds the those on the list, uh, mostly single, and our closed units, which mostly comprise the the one bedroom and the studios. And we're having a going to have a comprehensive report coming back over how best to use our repair and rebuild budget over that. Obviously, we're, we're going to have, a, as a committee, I suspect, a, a, a creative discussion between getting as many units open as possible and not throwing, uh, quote unquote, good money after bad. So it's going to be a, a really good, um, uh, good creative discussion. We want to use that, that money effectively. The exciting part of the meeting for me, particularly, the whole meeting was, was exciting, but the the, the committee um, was of one mind over this. The rental register, which you'll see in there, they grabbed hold of it. We'd asked staff to go away and report on this. Report had come back. Two months later, the committee made up its mind uh, on the uh, 10th of June and said, we want this. And so they're calling for a further report. That They recognise that the social situation in Christchurch now is such that uh, there is a, a kind of any, an anything goes with a lot of rentals in the city. We want to see whether we can put some tools in place to uh, exert some uh, control over that if we can. With the warrants of fitness, there will be one way or another some kind of kind of repository or collector point for warrants of fitness. So that may serve to give rise to a register anyway. But this is something that the committee was really determined about. So I just want you to know that in advance. Two additional recommendations are coming up. One is that we receive monthly written financial reports. And Pauline has a second one. We did receive a, uh, a comprehensive financial performance report. It was in the supplementary report to the committee was supposed to end up in the supplementary for the council, and it hasn't. So we will get that to you, so that you can see it. Can we can we wrap these up into into a single resolution? Yep. So that if we could go back to the resolution that's there, um, and amalgamate the because um, this was just in the Part A report, but you've really traversed the Part B report as well. So um, if we could have the um, that. That the, um, that the report on the Facilities Rebuild Social Housing Programme status update um, and the report as a whole um, uh, be, re be received and that uh, written financial reports yep. be included in the agenda of every monthly yep. housing committee meeting. Yeah, the additional two recommendations yeah, are set to go. and that staff request ECA to assess council old cold social housing units that would benefit from their insulation yep. program, and that ECA and CEA work there. together to expedite the process. So we yep. just put them all together into a single resolution. Um, I mean, you might want to just make them A and B, so that written financial reports and 
I don't know whether uh, Pauline would like to speak to her. Uh, Pauline, did you want to speak to that? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Straightforward. It's just that he could, um, does free assessment and free installation of insula insulation. And since um, Canterbury Energy Action are currently assessing the old coal units as well for, um, uh, for what they can do, like thermal drapes, and I've previously put, put a motion up for looking at heat pumps, which would be a, a cost to council for our social housing fund of about, I think, around 1300 per heat pump. Since they're doing that work anyway, if ECA and, and Canterbury Energy Action work together, it seems to me sensible. I'm wondering if we need that um, and staff in there as well, or do we just stuff. leave it as those two? I'm not sure. Okay, so I'll, I'll put um, the whole resolution as, as a single resolution. Um, all those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. You're about from the CEO's report. Uh, we see the Ds are completed. I'm wondering if council of uh, staff have made any decisions around the 144 closed units. How many of those are likely to be demolished, or is it too soon to have that information? Too soon. Yeah. So, but that's perhaps a report that your committee could. Um, receive. And thank you to that whole community group. They've had to handle not only the social housing consultation process, but also it's the same group doing the, the flooding work, uh, the flooding task force work. So I know there have been some big hours, including on the weekends and evenings, put in. I'd like to acknowledge that. All right. So um, thank you for that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start the community committee um, because we have another five minutes uh, before one o'clock. Um, 